What's going on everybody? C4 here. Welcome back to the newest episode of the Retro Rebuilds and it's about time. I've been trying to, to not let my bias, not let my homer dim affect this series, but I just really want to play at the Eagles. So hey, here we go. We are doing the Retro Rebuild for the Philadelphia Eagles starting in 2002 and right now we are going to be going five years. That's what we're doing in the Retro Rebuild series. Uh, so we get to kind of reshape the Philadelphia Eagles. We're starting in 02. This is actually the year that I became a fan of the Philadelphia Eagles. 02 into 03. Very special time. Very special time in my life. Uh, and here's here's the roster as I remember 90% of these guys. We had Donovan McNabb as our starting quarterback. 94 star dev. I mean, he was, you know, at this point in time, Donovan McNabb was arguably the best quarterback in the league. Uh, we have Deuce Staley at running back uh, and the youngster in Brian Westbrook down here, the rookie. Uh, his rookie season, so that's going to be very nice to get both those guys getting going together. Uh, wide receivers were dog shit. You know, the Freddie Mitchell, Fred X, 4th and 26. Fred was probably the, the most prolific wide receiver, and he literally did nothing. I mean, Thrash was all right. Pinkston was the guy, but uh, definitely need to look at improving these wide receivers. Uh, we have Chad Lewis, who's a solid tight end. Maybe we'll find a way to get Brent Selleck in here. Uh, Trey Thomas, one of the best offensive linemen in team history, 94. Uh, Wellborn, Michael, I don't remember him much, but 85, we'll take it. We got Hank Fraley at center, Jermaine Mayberry at right guard, and old John Runyon being able to ignite that rivalry with Michael Strahan just one more time uh, at right tackle. Defensively, we have Hugh Douglas, 93 overall. It's pretty nice, but we, as you can tell as we went along that offensive line, for a five-year rebuild, we're, you know, this team's kind of old. It's got a lot of guys that are close to that 30, if not above 30, so uh, we're got the draft particularly well. Uh, Brandon Whitten, Whitening. Not gonna lie, not really familiar with him. Uh, but I do remember Derek Burgess, so there we go. Uh, D tackle, Corey Simon. All right, that's OG. That's an OG right there. Darwin Walker, not super familiar with him. But you better believe Corey Simon was a beast. You got Sean Barber, LaVon Kirkland, goddamn Clemson legend. Carlos Emmons, kind of remember him. 85, he's 29 with a quick dev. That ain't bad. We got Ike Reese, who you know if you follow the Eagles on social media. Uh, he's a big guy there. Now we have the secondary is insane. We got Troy Vincent. Bobby Taylor as our veterans. We got Al Harris, you know, decent. But look, we got Lito Shepard, 78, star dev. Sheldon Brown, 78, star dev. So we're going to have to, I mean, let's be honest. Everyone should at this point, one of the greatest hits in league history. Sheldon Brown lighting up Reggie Bush. Go Google it if you've never seen it. Uh, we're going to try to find a way to get these guys on the field as soon as possible to capitalize on their... Uh, uh, on the really good dev traits. So actually, what I'm going to do is we'll see if we can take Al Harris here and throw him up on the trade block. Uh, same can go with written reality with Bobby Taylor. Because I'm not super familiar with Bobby Taylor uh, as much as I were with Troy Vincent. Troy Vincent is one of the best corners Philly's ever had. Um, well, Bobby Taylor was pretty decent as well, I guess. Uh, then we got Brian Dawkins, Weapon X, greatest eagle of all time, my favorite football player. Uh, we've coupled that with, we got uh, Blaine Bishop, not really familiar with him, but I do remember Michael Lewis. We have him in his rookie year, and he is an 80 overall. We have David Akers. Who I was actually kind of salty on David Akers, but then he redeemed himself with the draft pick announcement last year when Philly selected Dallas Goddard. He absolutely roasted the Dallas Cowboys, which was awesome. And we have a 40-year-old punter who actually was, at this point in time, one of the greatest punters the league has ever seen. So very excited to get back into things here with the Philadelphia Eagles as we start our journey from 2002 and go all the way five more years. All right, so we're able to ship away Al Harris for just a second round. We're here for Bobby Taylor, big-time trade, but we're getting a first-round pick here from the Pittsburgh Steelers. So thank you for your service, Bobby Taylor. But it's time to let Lito Shepard and Sheldon Brown shine. And we'll take that first-round pick. And at the end of year number one, an 11-5 and record with playoffs on the line in Week 17. For that final spot, it was the 10-5 and Redskins versus the 10-5 and Eagles. And we stopped them 45-24. An excellent result as we go to take on a team that most Eagle fans don't, I mean, older Eagle fans don't want to talk about. Anytime you see the Bucks, because I actually think, was it 02? Was it this, or was it 01 or 02? Maybe even 03. One of those years we had an ugly, ugly loss to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that uh, I've tried to just, you know, nuke from my brain. Our team's incredibly talented. 92 overall, the 97 offense, 93 defense, second in the NFC East. Giants were really, really good. Uh, looking at how we performed, though, 4,000 passing yards, 34 touchdowns to 9 picks for Donovan McDab. We had 1,300 yards, 9 TDs from Deuce Staley. Uh, unfortunately, Brian Rushbrook didn't get a whole lot of action, which is disappointing. Uh, James Thrash, ladies and gentlemen. 80 catches, 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns. Good God. On the defensive front, 100 tackles from Troy Vincent. We had 14 sacks, 11 TFLs from Emmons. 
Sean Barber, 11 and a half sacks, 10 and a half sacks. Corey Simon, I mean, we got pressure left. 22 TFLs, 8 and a half sacks from Hugh Douglas. Ridiculous. Uh, two picks from Lito Shepard leading the team, but a lot of turnovers across the board. Look at Weapon X. 70 tackles. Take that. Uh, look at the yearly awards. MVP went to Marshall Falk with, okay, I guess Donna McNabb doesn't show up there any. Offense player of the year went to Marshall Falk. Donna McNabb coming in at number six. Defense player of the year. Emmons coming in at number two. You like to see that. Offensive rookie of the year went to Randall Cunningham. Doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, you, you know you can't. You, this doesn't even matter. I, I don't. I shouldn't even look at because everyone knows. That, you know, I've already already kind of break out here. He'll defend it anyways. It's like you know when like the the game adds like Adrian Peterson back. Sometimes he'll glitch and show up as a rookie of the year. Well, that kind of is what happens here with these rosters because you're just heavily editing every single player. So yeah, uh, yeah. You just if if you hop into your retro franchise mode, you'll probably notice that the rookies of the year, some of the awards, will be looking a little weird. Um, but hey, we made the playoffs. Like I said, we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So let's give them this smoke at Raymond James Stadium. It's probably not even going to be full. It's probably going to be more Eagle fans there than Buck fans. And let's smoke this 8 team. And also, I'm using the dev trait version of these roster, which is supposed to improve the play of the moments and just the sim in general. So put up or shut up. This is the, the worst thing that we see from the base Madden game is we consistently lose to these 8-8 eight and eight teams. And we are one of the best rosters. We are definitely a much better roster than this Bucks team. Well, maybe not much better because 0-2, they just come out the Super Bowl. But uh, let, let's just see how much different the play of the moment sim feels with this trait adjustment. All right, very excited to see. It. Okay, I will say they are a 91 overall. We're a 92. But it's still an 8-8 eight eight team versus our team. So let's, let's see a dub here. Okay. Well, we're not off to a hot start. We are struggling very much, down 14-3. to uh, Not getting any points here. Need Donovan McNabb to step up, which he is. We got our touchdown here, cut the lead to seven. Uh, but it is the Bucks that are looking like the vastly superior team at this point in the game. As uh, we are just settling for field goals. Three field goal attempts at our last couple of attempts down there in the red zone. Down 13. Ugh. That's ugly. I, like I said, um, okay, first experience with the updated traits, not great. But even though they were an 8-8 eight eight team, they were a 91 overall. It's not like your occasional 8-8 eight eight team, like we're year 4, year 5 of the Rebel. You see like the 8-8 eight eight Chargers that are like an 86 overall. And then you get these similar results when you're like the 92, 93, 94. Uh, vastly superior team from overall and record. So, I mean, the Bucs just had a shitty record. Their team was very good because like this is the this is like right around the time that the Bucs actually won the Super Bowl. So, uh, I, know, I, I know it sounds like I'm defending the Sim. We're going to have plenty of more opportunities in this rebuild to see if the Dev Trade Sim really does, you know, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? But uh, I guess we can say a little bit of a sour taste in our mouths from the first time utilizing the Trait Mod. All right, this was a big offseason for the Philadelphia Eagles, but it did not necessarily start with their draft because in the first round they got out of the U, Jerome McDougal, defensive end. He just... I don't. I think he's actually already been selected here. Yeah, he's not there anymore. We could we could go like OC Mignon or something. And then from that we got LJ Smith at tight end. He was actually like all right, but never like a great tight end. And I'm not gonna lie, I literally don't know any of the other guys that they picked up. So I think we have kind of free reign here to uh, draft how we want. We've always made our draft board. Lots of familiar names. Now Dallas Clark's very interesting. But I kind of do feel like maybe getting Jason Witten in the second or third round, you know, we could get LJ Smith. But I think Jason Witten could be interesting as well, just obviously the, the immediate ties. And he can't burn us anymore on third and long. Uh, Chris Clemens was an undrafted free agent, but he actually had like a very short time with Philly, but he was really, really productive. Uh, we have White Lightning, Kevin Curtis, who I think came to Philly after a time with the Rams. Uh, then we have Anquan Bolden. Anquan Bolden was like the first meme that I learned as an Eagle fan because everyone wanted him every single year. Every single offseason, Philly was going to find a way to trade for Anquan Bolin. And if you do know those means, you remember those means, that means you're an OG Eagle fan. So how, I, how I'm playing our draft board right now is I think we'll get Anquan Bolden in the first round, Jason Witten in the second round, and then I don't know how, the, we'll, we'll just probably just sim the rest of the draft. So we're going to get Anquan Bolden for the memes, and uh, we desperately need wide receiver help. It's, it's definitely the biggest need that we need on our roster. So there we go, 76 star dev out of Florida State, Anquan Bolden, one of the best slot wide receivers the league's ever seen. Oh my God, Jason Witten's gone. 
Jason Witten is gone. We have LJ Smith there. See, I don't know about the rule for undrafted free agents. Like, you know, we kind of set the rule for ourselves. The house rules that if a guy, like, you know, we got, you know, where's a good example? A good example of, like, give me a sec. Because it's, it's worth making this example. So we know, okay, I definitely know on, like, the defensive side. Um... You know, when you look here, we got Robert Mathis. Robert Mathis is one of the greatest defensive ends, especially if you're a Colts fan. He's in the fifth round. We kind of made the rule that, like, you're not going to draft Robert Mathis in the first round because you know he's going to be good. So I kind of personally set the rule that we draft him at most a round ahead of where he's gone. So instead of, you know, we, we either get Robert Mathis in the fourth or the fifth. We're not going to use any other early pick. But I've never really talked about what we're going to do for the undrafted free agents. I figure for the sake of making the video interesting, maybe why, why always wait to the seventh round? Because I, I feel that like almost feels kind of like insulting waiting to the seventh round to get a guy like Antonio Gates. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to be setting new ground here, a new precedent. If, you know, we're not going to overuse it because, like I said, that'll get boring for me to even record it. But we've yet to use Antonio Gates. I don't even think we've cheesed or got any big undrafted free agents yet. So we're going to get Antonio Gates here in the second round because you guys know he played basketball. So Andy Reid always out thinking outside the box. No one's rating this guy. He uses his second round pick. I remember one year Andy Reid in like the fifth round drafted a skier to come in and play. He's like a world-class skier to come in. I can't remember his name for the life of me. But here we go. We're going to grab Antonio Gates at tight end. And the rest is history. Look at what we're launching, the new Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. We're talking lots of new tricks and hundreds of insane new combos. So here's how our draft finished out. We got Bolden and Gates, and then I pretty much just let the you know let it sim. I feel like that's the easiest way to avoid the temptation of drafting your cheese guys. But we had our draft board set, so we did get a lot of the guys that we did want. Chris Clemens, White Lightning, Kevin Curtis, Israel Adonage. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know idea who Donnie Nicky is or Lee Suggs or so Bieski, but I, I, Scott Shanley, I think he spent some time. 73 in the seventh round is not bad. 73 quick. Scott Shanley, I want to guess the Saints, maybe? But our, our two big gets here on the offensive side, clearly Anquan Bolden and Mr. Antonio Gates. Hey, do you guys know we play basketball? As we start year number two, trying to make another playoff push, I think the 03 season, they went 12-4 and four in real life. So that is the precedent that we are setting. Uh, really good roster, 89 overall, 93 offense, 91 defense. Like I said, right off the rip. Way, way back in the opener. We do have some old guys on this roster. So you're going to see, like, John Runyon regressed a little bit. Mayberry regressed a little bit. Um, I think that's pretty much it, though, for the offensive side of the regressions. We do see our two new starters, Anquan Bolden. We are starting slot, and Antonio Gates will be the starting tight end. Defensively, makes up this 91 defense. I don't think there's any changes whatsoever. A little bit of regression there. Troy Vincent dipped just a little bit. Um, but ultimately, and I think Weapon X went from a 99 to a 98. The rest of the team is fairly strong. We didn't spend any money in free agency because we did a re-sign Don Nab, which took up a lot of our salary cap. Um, but yeah, year two, like again, we're, we're in a window. We're in a window to win right now. So let's make another legit playoff run and hopefully get another experience with a play of the moment sim with a very strong roster to get a fair judge whether or not these dev trade adjustments mean diddly squat. All right, so we are roughly at the midway point of the season. Uh, looks like we're going to win the next... Eight games in a row to try to match our record again. I'm not, I'm not going to be honest with you. I'm not overly uh, impressed with the Sim so far. Um, four, I mean, we're one game back in the NFC. So I guess if we could still win the NFC, so it'll be fine. But, uh, you know, a little bit of a dip. A little bit of a dip. And uh, yeah, just, just giving you guys a little mid-season update about maybe not being sold on these dev trades. And at the end of year number two, another wild card berth, 10 and 6. They were 12 and 4 in real life, so, you know, it's roughly where we want it to be. And we definitely finished out down the stretch a lot better. Enough that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to back off. I'm being overly critical about these, uh, the trade boost, the trade adjustment, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we got that 99 offense. We're, we're firing on all cylinders. Once again, man, the Giants, what is going on with this Giants roster? Very good, but we're 10 and 6. We'll take it. Look at the stats here. Don McNabb, productive year. 3,900 passing yards, 35 touchdowns to six picks. Take that every day of the week. 1,300 yards, 13 tutties from Deuce Daly. A lot more production from B. West. Uh, no 1,000 yard receiver. Not as big a year from James Strash, but really nice season from Antonio Gates. 74 catches, 790 yards, nine touchdowns. Pinkston was productive. Anquan Bolden, not bad as a rookie. 
Defensively, Michael Lewis on the team with 86 tackles. Um, we got 14 sacks, 11 TFLs from Hugh Douglas, 7 from Emmons Barber and Corey Simon. Four picks, Lito Shepard leading the team. A couple singles. Man, we got to make Brian Dawkins. Okay, I'm going to make Brian Dawkins like my money backer next year. He's just not getting enough stats in this. And he, in reality, Brian Dawkins was like the money backer if there was technically one in Jim Johnson's defense. That's what made Brian Dawkins so good is because Jim Johnson utilized him as such. Dalvin McNabb coming in at number nine in the MVP race. I'm on green, uh, winning the Offensive Player of the Year. Don McNabb coming in at number three. Deuce Staley at number nine. Defense Player of the Year went to Michael Strahan. Uh, Hugh Douglas coming in at number eight. So really nice season, and once again, another playoff berth, but that's what I'm actually going to do right this second because I know I will forget about it. Let's go here. Sub linebackers, Blaine Bishop. Ain't going to cut it. Weapon X, congrats on your promotion. You're going to be staying on the field. And uh, let's go do the damn thing against Kurt Warner, the greatest show on turf, and the Rams. All right. Giving the Sim another chance. If we go 0-2 in the playoffs, I'm going to be highly skeptical. If we can at least win this one, you know what? We're, you know, the Sim's pretty good. We get the nice little instant touchdown, a 10-3 lead here. In the second half, we're starting to run the score up just a tad. I like to see our defense playing well. I mean, we're 99 offense, 93 defense. We should be flexing on them just a little bit. And the greatest show on turf is nearing the end of their dominance. So, you know, I, I firmly expect us to win this game. But we are slowing up. Have not done diddly squat. We're going to use that because it's less swearing in the second half. And I assume the Rams are going to try and score. But look, they actually didn't get the cheese. It's the touchdown. Maybe the traits are working. Look, they got that last second tutty, but the game was already over. So that's that doesn't cause a lot of concern for me. As we get our playoff victory, 31-24 to over the Rams in the NFC wildcard. 270 passing yards, three touchdowns from Donovan McNabb. Todd Pinkston had himself a day. Seven catches, 146 yards. As we are moving on to the NFC Divisional Round. This is the game I wanted. Second game in, we're taking on this goddamn giant team that keeps winning the NFC East. That's so not New York Giants, you know, to come in and win the NFC. So well, we know when push comes to shove in the playoffs, that battle between Michael Strahan and John Runyon on the right side of the line that's going to be big time, and uh, let's see if we can edge them out here. Getting a couple field goals, a little bit more little more field goals than what I like. Giants seem to be making the most of their opportunities. Um, but one point game, one point game in the second half. They've been very good so far in this sim, so I guess technically we would be the underdogs. And, uh, you know, my God, they're playing really good defense. Lots of field goals. Come on, Donovan. Oh, my God. There we go. Dominic Nav gets the tidy. We go up seven, three minutes left to go. A uh, nice little drive there to tie it up. 24 apiece. 216 left on the clock in the fourth quarter. We have to punt it. We got to play defense. They able to kick the field goal. 107. 107. Kick the field goal to win. David Akers, one of the best kickers. There we go. We tied up. Force it to overtime. 27 to 27 in this NFC East slobber knocker. They queue up a little Jim Ross there. We got the ball. It's in our hand. Oh, we had to punt it. You punt it, you're going to lose every time. They didn't even kick the field goal. They had the disrespect to score a touchdown and run it up. What's the carry, Collins? Come on. All right, so we're now here in the 04 draft. Obviously, the draft, look, Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, and Big Ben are still on the board. This was the draft where the Eagles got Sean Andrews. Might be one of the biggest, oh, what could have been so that I've remembered since I've been an Eagle fan. Basically, the guy, like, made, like, he was starting, like, a Joe Thomas run, like, made the Pro Bowl. Back when the Pro Bowl, I felt like, actually meant something, like, the first three years of his career. And then he went crazy and, like, never played football again. Uh, he's already off the board, though. So, how, how it's shaping up here, I, I definitely want to try to maybe look at getting Jared Allen because we desperately need to get younger defensive end uh, because that's a little bit, you know, we're taking our one round at a time. Uh, Carlos Stansby, outside linebacker from Auburn, is going to be our first pick. Uh, bounced around for a bunch of teams, but had a super long, productive career in the NFL. 78 quick. So a quick look at our draft recap. We got Carlos Dansby in the first round. 78. We saw we got Randy Starks, D-tackle out of Merrigan. Uh, 75 quick. We got Jared Allen from Idaho State. Uh, you know, freak. One of my favorite defense ends of all time, so I'm super pumped to actually get him. Uh, rest of the draft, you know, pretty solid. We look at Wilson. We got a 79. We got Greg Jones, the fullback from Florida State. Uh, we got Michael Malcolm Floyd, wide receiver, Wyoming. It's a good draft. Year number three is here, and we are still consistently one of the best rosters in the game, even with the regressions. Still have one of the best offensive lines. We had Antonio Gates up to an 83. Same with Anquan Bolden. Brian Westbrook is our new starter at running back, up to an 85. McNabb very close to getting his gold cleats for him and his mama to share. 
Defensively, we welcome a bunch of new starters. Jared Allen will be starting at defensive end. Corey Simon, we got Walker. Sheldon Brown is a 90. Lito Shepard's a 90. Weapon X, 96. Linebacker core, still a work in progress, still a work in progress, but uh, we definitely have one of the best secondaries in the league. Some of the most exciting young prospects on both sides of the football. So we're expecting once again to be very competitive here in the 04 season. This is obviously the season that the Philadelphia Eagles in real life went to the Super Bowl and unfortunately lost to the damn New England Patriots. So let's hopefully we have an opportunity to repeat that and, uh, you know, change history just a little bit and actually win the big one and not have to wait till 2017. And at the end of year number three, no playoffs. The year they actually went to the Super Bowl, we finished with tied worst record in the NFC East. I'm not, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm not seeing it with these dev trades. I don't, I mean, you can have down years, I guess. Uh, I mean, you know, you guys, you guys could judge for yourself what's going on. Looking at our actual stats, though, for almost 4,100 passing yards for McNabb, 33 touchdowns, 10 picks. Uh, Westbrook in his first year as our full-time starter, not overly impressive. Anquan had a good year. Freddie Mitchell, defensively, not great. <sighs> not a great year. Yearly awards MVP with the Jeff Garcia. That's that's cool. Jeff Garcia there. Don McNabb at eight. You guys play the year with the Jonathan Vilma. We had no one. Offensive rookie of the year went to Mr. Eli Manning. We had no one. Defensive rookie of the year went to Courtney Watson. Sure. Cool. Um, just, just a weird year, man. You know, maybe this is just that one year that we always get that's really, really weird of a five-year rebuild, except it's happening in year three instead of year four, I guess. Let's let's get in the offseason as quickly as possible to forget this horrific season. Finally, our first re agency signing. It's actually got to spend some time with the Philadelphia Eagles outside linebacker Dahani Jones. We just have, you know, a blank free agent, that guy right now. Uh, you will see those pop up when you use these rosters. You just get them rid. Uh, you know, they're just guys that, you know, has to get done. Uh, but yeah, Dehani Jones would be it, obviously. Look at that. What is that? That's only a 25-point upgrade. In this 2005 draft, there are a lot of names that I, you know, that actually spent time with the Eagles. And I'm, I'm actually going to try to make this a little bit of an Eagles draft because we got we got some big names. The Philadelphia Eagles did get Mike Patterson, who actually spent a, you had some good productive years for the Philadelphia Eagles. You got Trent Cole in the fifth round. Todd Father himself, Todd Herman's in the fourth Evan Mathis, who eventually became a member of the Philadelphia Eagles in the third, and is one of my favorite Eagles of all time. Greatest Twitter follow uh, for a player. And we always, Darren Sproles, another player that spent some time with the Philadelphia Eagles. So we're going to be all over the place here in drafting our roster. Uh, but I'm currently thinking offensive line is the biggest need that we need to fix. So in the first round, we are going to select Jamal Brown from Oklahoma and then finish out the rest of the draft kind of with maybe some biased Eagles selections. And Jamal Brown comes in, 79 star, franchise tackle. Here's a look at our draft class. So as you saw, we did get Jamal Brown in the first. In the second, we brought in Evan Mathis, 79 star. Uh, he's one of the greatest combines for an offensive lineman ever. We got Todd Harriman's in the third, 75. Trent Cole in the fourth, unfortunately. We weren't able to get Darren Sproles, but then again, with Brian Westbrook on the roster, we don't really have a spot for Darren Sproles. We got Derek Anderson. Wasn't funny. Not laughing. Anyone else get that meme? Either way, uh, really, really good draft class. Definitely rebuilt our offensive line and as well got a couple Philadelphia Eagle legends. Year four is upon us, and we're just trying to throw out that nightmare of year three that was just horrific. Our team, yet again, one of the best rosters in the game. 91 offense, 93 defense for a 90 overall. Uh, no real changes to... Uh, we got younger on the offensive line. We got Brown starting at right tackle, but other than that, no real changes to the offense. Antonio Gates looking better. Uh, definitely could use another wide receiver. There hasn't been much in free agency. Uh, but, I mean, you know, this we, by this time, we would have, you know, T.O. and Don McNabb having their little bit of issues. Um, defensively, things stay pretty much the same. Corey Simon still a monster as a 96 overall. Uh, Allen is developing. Lito Shepard, Sheldon Brown, both 93s. Lewis is a 90. Weapon X, 93. Donnie Jones, big free agency side. So, you know, we, we're better on both sides of the ball. And I, I'm assuming by, we, you know, when we hit our stride midseason, we're going to be even better. And hopefully we can get our first NFC East title. Year four is done and did make the playoffs yet again. Three-way tie for 97 again. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, truth be told that these, this trait thing is supposed to be for play the moments only. I thought from the first couple times that I used it, it would it was also affecting like just the general sim. Again, you know, use your own judgments. Obviously, I'm in the moment right now. It's kind of frustrating, but I, I don't know, man. Um, 
Well, we're heading to a Super Bowl or bust scenario for year five. That's we love those. Don McNabb having a down year. Almost you know, 3,900 passing yards, 27 TDs to five picks. Not good enough. We're going to have to go all in to get him some more weapons. Uh, Westbrook, not great running the ball. Kevin Curtis had a nice season. Uh, average years from Gates and Bolden defensively. Harrison led the team in tackles. We got not a lot of sacks. I mean, tackles for loss and sacks. Combination is not bad, especially from Corey Summon. 24 TFLs, 8 sacks. Uh, interceptions, 5 picks. Little Shepard, I mean, Little Shepard and Sheldon Brown are as good as any cornerback Tatum we've had in any rebuilds ever. Amon Green wins the MVP again. What else is new, huh? Amon Green always wins the MVP. Offensive Rookie of the Year went to Amon Green. Dominic Nabb at number 9. Defense Player of the Year went to Barrett Mood. As a rookie, I think, nonetheless, with Harrison coming in at number 9. So, I mean, our roster's stacked. But still no Super Bowl. Imagine the perfect video store. It would have a great selection, right? Right. Over 10,000 videos. Three evening rentals, so no rush, no hassle. Fast checkout. 24-hour quick drop return. Open late every night. Well, the perfect video store... Welcome to Blockbuster Video. ...is popping up all over the country. There's one near you. So for a final free agency period, we need to get better wide receiver. So out of, <laughs> I'm okay. Highest wide receiver that was available was Antoine Randall L, 91 overall. Sure. Uh, hey, you guys know much like Antonio Gates played football. You know Antonio, or uh, you know, or Antonio Gates played basketball. Did you guys know Antoine Randall L was a quarterback? It's like you know he was Antoine Randall L was that obscure reference before Julian Edelman came into the league. And then uh, Troy Vincent wants to get a free agent as a veteran. We'll bring him in and be our third corner. Nice little locker room presence as we make a Super Bowl push. Now we have our final draft here in uh, 2007. A draft that wasn't particularly great for the Philadelphia Eagles. Reggie Bush is still there. Okay. That's interesting. This is a draft. Like, I'm just, I can't remember exactly the, the order. For whatever reason, like, the, the Twitter, or not the Twitter, but the uh, the Wikipedia pages are, like, all messed up. But there's, I remember, you know, um, Jason Avant. We got Bloom. This is the guy I was telling you. Philly drafted that was, like, a skier. Jeremy Bloom. Like a special return guy, skier. But we need wide receiver is our biggest need. Uh, so we are just going to go out and draft Greg Jennings. The man put the team on his back, though, from Western Michigan. And he's going to come out as a 78 star dev wide receiver. And will probably start for us as a rookie. Draft recap time. We had a solid draft after Greg Jennings. Uh, you know, just some all right guys. Not going to lie. Not super familiar with most of them. Willie Colon. I remember him. He played some guard. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, great last name. Ashton Yabuti, no way I wasn't drafting that guy. Uh, but, you know, it was just a solid draft. I mean, I'm, you know, kind of frustrated at this point in time with our rebuild because we don't have a Super Bowl. We don't even have a deep playoff run. So, uh, you know, the addition of Greg Jennings will definitely help uh, bring some production to our wide receiver core and give another weapon for Mr. Donovan McNabb as we enter a year five Super Bowl or bust scenario with the retro rebuild Eagles. All right, we are here, year five, Super Bowl or bust time, and our team is stacked as good. You know, that's how it works. Usually, is the fifth year, our team's as strong as it's ever been. 94 overall base with a 95 offense, 97 defense on the offense. We got Trey Thomas, Evan Mathis, Hank Fraley, Jermaine Mayberry, and Jamal Brown. Antonio Gates, 90 overall at tight end. We got Anquan Bolden, Greg Jennings, and Antoine Randall L at wide receiver. Greg Jones at fullback with Brian Westbrook as our lead runner with Donovan McNabb as our QB 98. Defensively, going from the middle to the outside, we have Dahani Jones, Harrison, and Dansby as our linebackers. Trent Cole, Walker, Corey Simon, and Jared Allen on the defensive line. In the secondary, we got Lito Shepard, 96. Sheldon Brown, 9-5, to play, play with the veteran Troy Vincent. Weapon X, 92. Michael Lewis, 92. We got David Akers still doing a damn thing. Mike Cyphers as our punter. This team is stacked. This team is better than Philadelphia. This was like a down year for the Eagles. This was the year they had all that issues with McNabb and Terrell Owens. So, hey, that, how about every year so far that the Philadelphia Eagles in real life did really good, and we've been average in the sim. How about the year that the Eagles in real life was god-awful, Maybe we turn it around and we put up 13, 14 wins in the sim and go on a deep playoff run. Fingers crossed. Bullshit. Bullshit. We're here week 17 because we have to play this game because I'm not not playing an actual gameplay with the Eagles, but we're not going to make the playoffs. 7-7-1 seven, seven, and one with a 95 overall team, 97 offense, 99 defense. There's nothing you can do to fix the sim in Madden. Like, I hope somehow, some way, this comes across the devs' table somewhere up there in Madden. They go, ah, you know what? 
probably shouldn't be having these results, you know? Whatever is making these results happen probably should be modified a little bit. Um, one game away from being the worst team in the division. All right, well, let's get into let's you know, let's at least play with this game uh, once, play with this team once, and take on these six and nine Falcons. <sighs> okay, okay, big 38 yard pass there to Mr. Uh, Mr. Davis. I don't know who Davis is, to be completely honest with you, but we'll take it. First and goal on the four. We could see four specialed up, but we're looking at white lightning in the slot there. That could be a nice little, nice little tutty against the, oh, right there, beat. Oh my God, the D-Lamin almost picked it off. Oh, that would just be the perfect representation of uh, of this rebuild is Donovan Knapp drops back and it gets picked off by a tackle that probably has 30-some catching, maybe even worse. Second and goal, go for the same play. Probably should be looking at maybe like a C4 special, but uh, we're just going to try to force it in. That's a terrible animation for the catch that doesn't go our way. Now we're set with a third and goal. Screw it. Let's give Mr. Weapon X... Something to cheer about on those sidelines there and uh, see if we can get a tidy here. We're going to pitch it. That's definitely not Brian Westbrook in the backfield. So is this going to work? 25 takes it. Not LaShawn McCoy. It's Norwood, who actually, ironically enough, I think spent some time with the Atlanta Falcons. That name sounds familiar. Jerry's Norwood is like a fast running back. I don't know. I guess so. For the goal, we're going to go for it. Could be nothing else to lose. Don McNabb drops back. It's not really a clean pocket. He's scrambling. There's nobody over there. He throws it in the end zone. Turnover on downs. Oh, okay. That's just that's just nasty. That is just nasty, Mr. 88. Okay. And then do a dance that totally existed back in 2007. Oh, there we go. That's a tremendous ball, Mr. McNabb. As we get up to the one-yard line, Antoine Randall with a nice catch. Very nice, sir. So now let's try the C4 special. Maybe, just maybe, we actually have Brian Westbrook in. Maybe there's Norwood as like the design back, which I think he is. Uh, when it really should be Brian Westbrook, but let's get the C4 special work. We were able to get, like, I'm just simming the special teams and stuff. We got a special teams touchdown, which gave us 14. And that Norwood tutty as he combs his, his sick cornrows back gives us a 21-7 lead over the Falcons here in Week 17 in a meaningless game. All right, we got the ball here. Dying end moments of the game. Trying to just, you know, kill it off. But obviously, we want to get scored. Touchdown. Third and six on the seven. A tutty will give us a nice little victory to give us uh, an above 500 record. Pretty much a coverage sack here at this point. We're going to float it in because McNabb's throwing the run. Is ridiculous as he connects with White Lightning. Uh, hey, we'll take it. So, hey, we got a victory. We got a victory on the season. We got some nice gameplay with, it, in my opinion, the best jersey combination the Philadelphia Eagles have ever had. Uh, hot take. Um, but, you know, the game, the game, the franchise mode, Madden Night, it is what it is. So you're going to you're gonna sometimes rebuild. You're going to go this way. And uh, you, no matter how much time people uh, you know try to fix this game, try to fix dev traits, try to figure out why the game is the way that it is it still doesn't give you a, a product that you're really satisfied with but uh hey nice little duel between McNabb and Vic one of the better duels since I've been a fan of the Eagles and uh, we got the job done we finished the game off with a win and that will finish off this retro rebuild I hope you guys did enjoy uh let me know in the comment section below what team you want to see next for the retro rebuilds as always, if it's your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.